so many players do, but I love a good color changer every it's, once in a while. It's nice to have your signature thing, but Wadi's pulling out what I like to call the dimensional bus mm -hmm. as he's going up against Quick with the Samus. I, I feel like I used to know Quick as a Dark Samus player, but again, that's a palette swap. There's negligible differences it's, it's between the two. Pretty much the same. One jumps a little bit more like Spider-Man. Yeah, one's, one's Spider-Man and one's ball. Yeah. And now we see Quick known as Hallmark for their movement. We're going to see if that's going to be uh, crucial on getting around these gyros and lasers that Rob likes to set up nooch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, be, both of these guys had a pretty tough match to get to this point, by the way. I know that Wadi had to beat Giddy, one of the best out of Texas, maybe the best out of San Antonio that there is, and Quick had to beat Jay Dizzle, the best out of Australia. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's a tall order. That was a 2-1 victory, or rather a 3-2 victory for Quick in that set. So we'll see how it goes against that Robot, both of these guys looking evenly matched here as we get to the start, but there's already been a whole lot of robot in the corner. Yeah, a lot of robot in the corner both ways. Gonna set up that up tilt in the up air, and that Ooh. is going to send the Space Pirate flying. I, I kind of thought that the Samus being heavy enough, I didn't think that that would kill off the top, but Wadi had the perfect timing getting that sweet, sweet part of that up air, Ooh. and now looking for even more. I love that clean turnaround into the forward air to keep the pressure on Quick, who is having a devil of a time getting out of disadvantage. Mm -hmm. Wadi mixing up the timing a little bit so he doesn't get clipped by that down air and is able to safely make it back on stage. Ooh, Ooh. Beautiful, immediate up air out of shield to punish the down tilt. Wadi patiently waited to his to his detriment. Yeah, it's great matchup knowledge because you can't do that up air on short characters out of shield, but Rob is a pretty tall guy. He's going to be able to eat that up air, which can combo into a whole lot, interrupting the optic blast. Quick barely escaping the corner, still working on this first stock. It looks like it's a little bit too hard to chew right now. But the well-timed laser means Wadi didn't have to deal, and again, does not have to deal with the ledge trapping capabilities of Samus, which is normally where she makes that cheddar. Now stuck on the platform, another up air is going to seal the deal. Wadi up two stocks. And this is the biggest problem that Quick has faced so far, is that when you get up into the air as Samus, it can be really hard to land if you can't utilize those bombs all the time because she's so floaty. And Rob is a great juggling character. You see right there, just wanted to jump towards center stage, get the control back, but Wadi had the platform covered perfectly. Everything was covered by that Nair. Yeah, and we, we have seen that bomb be great for Quick to get out of disadvantage multiple times, but it also leaves you in a situation where if your opponent waits for it, they can just swat once you get big again. Ooh. Wadi right now at 211%. It'll finally be the bomb into the charge shot. That means that that stock has gone post hit at like 240 Unbelievably long. But you know what they say, Rob is big. He will last for a long time. But you can't say the same for Quick in this instance. Those Samus stocks kind of got melted. Like you said, at percents earlier than you would anticipate for such a heavy character. Yeah, I mean, that close to the side blast zone, right? Pokemon Stadium 2 might be a really big stage. But, you know, those ledges are actually relatively close to the blast zone. 92 and didn't even get the full meaty hit to that side B. But it just goes to show you how good Rob is at demolishing characters who can't get out of disadvantage quickly, right? Maybe Samus has a lot of tools, but if she's slow and if it's easy to predict where she's going to be, Rob's coverage is incredible, and Wadi has shown what this matchup can look like if it's played well. Yeah, absolutely. I'm interested to see what Quick's able to do as far as changing maybe a little bit of the terrain as well as making sure that he's not able to be as up close against Wadi. I feel like Wadi made a lot of moves with that Nair with the forward airs to get a lot of stuff started once Quick was kind of off kilter and not so much from the distance. We didn't really get to see a lot of the charge shot play a huge factor until Quick was already an advantage. Mm -mm. And a big reason for that is that Wadi was using the gyro a ton because that gyro will block the charge Three. shot from traveling over it. It's Whoa. impossible for Quick to really establish that as a long distance. Right? You see right there, Wadi's immediately like, yeah, let's get that gyro out there. You're not gonna get any combo starters right off the beginning of the match. Get that little charge and we're seeing again, the bombs are useful a little bit to keep you at a disadvantage, but if once Wadi just waits for you to get a little bit big again, that's a clean swat. Ooh, but this is one of the first clean big openings that Quake has had. We're on small battlefield, which will make this ledge trapping so much more devious from him because there is way less space for Wadi to go before he hits that platform. And Samus is one of the best platform coverers in the entire game. Mm -hmm. Unfortunate air dodge from Wadi puts him in an awkward spot. Quick is picking it up with a forward air. Wadi goes extremely high, and that Nair does net him away down. 
Oh, I love the mix-up right there with a the double charge shot, though. Just that little poke with that second one was enough to get Wadi off balance. And like you said, that charge shot is the deciding factor in this matchup. And Quick has been going ballistic with that B-button. Mm -hmm. Doing a great job of catching Wadi's landings now. This time went a little overzealous, wanted to catch the jump, or even the meaty hits the neutral getup from Wadi, but he makes his way back. Now with footing on the ground, this is anyone's first stock. Has the top set up. Both of these characters are insane at the ledge trap, but both of these players have been doing a great job of neutralizing that aspect of the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we saw right there, quick, wary of the gyro, able to utilize that forward air to get right off, and Wadi still not saying die. It'll only be that final lingering tip of that forward air. Now, when you ledge trap Rob, because he has that large stature, right, having a lingering hitbox to cover him out there is very important, and quick, demonstrating knowledge in this matchup, demonstrating knowledge of his own character. Where did all that damage come from? You know, uh, one of the big reasons we're seeing the kind of damage come out of Quick is he doesn't always just go for that guaranteed combo. Sometimes he'll let you, you know, pick the bad option despite you having a true follow-up to get that extra damage. That's why we saw that up tilt. Mm -hmm. Oh, that air dodge is going to be punished with that up throw. That's the Tombstone Crusher, and Wadi will take that first stock finally. But at that 83%, he has got to find a way to build up damage and quick because quick himself, he has been nothing but. Yeah, and he's got all that damage built up on Rob on Wadi here. We could see at the ledge charge shot might even just do it. Now the gyro is in quick space, but not for long. Well, there we go, another use of that forward air. I think that Quick is really tuning into the best places where he can cover Wadi. There's that active grab, too. Mm -hmm. He is absolutely all over him when it comes to just leaving spaces that Wadi cannot contest. And twice now, I think we've seen Wadi try to just avoid the ledge altogether, fly above oh. it, and see if Quick's autopiloting on setting up those bombs, but Quick is not. He is actually quick with a trigger, ready to catch Wadi flying above. Ooh, but Wadi was ready for that roll in, too. He saw that Quick Ooh. had the perfect timing on the laser, and now this is the big juggle. And I love that aggressive side B right there. Again, Quick can't really mix up that landing too much because he's so floaty. Wadi knows where he's going to be, and as a Rob, that's all you need. Mm -hmm. Great coverage on the space and great coverage on recognizing that Quick wants to fade back there. Wadi evening up the game stock-wise, Percents are negligible in the difference. Now we see a Nair not quite get stuff started right on quick to jump out of the way, move to that platform. Ooh, but Wadi a little aggressive with that landing, trying to catch quick, mashing a button after the Nair. But like you said, it's the patience for quick that has been so good for him. Now it's those bombs again. Is he going to catch Wadi going above? He did duck out of the way, but not a quick enough punish. And Wadi just playing it safe right there, not trying to get the biggest punish possible. Quick, again, the slow recovery. Wadi again trying to get aggressive to hit him for that. Ooh, nice coverage there, catching Wadi's timing on the getup with the aerial. Now Wadi again completely wants to avoid the ledge trap, but Quick will catch him before he touches that platform. Ooh, I love the mix up with the down air though. Just like Samus can mix it up with those bombs, Rob has a couple of tools to stall himself in the air as well. And this is anybody's game right now. Love the coverage. Oh my goodness. Wadi is chasing so high up after that upper connect. Can he get the back here? Does not find it. Now Quick's got his feet back on the ground. Gyro behind him. Oh, oh no! But great DI by Quick on the down tilt, making sure that he doesn't get bounced back towards the Rob. It's anybody's game right now. It all comes down to who can get that stage control in that one final hit. Now Wadi is the one with that control. Going to be trying to set up this gyro at the ledge. What is Quick's answer going to be? We see the jump because it's not a true follow-up. Wadi wasn't ready to pull the trigger. Ooh. And the dash attack is going to catch Wadi, send him straight into that top left corner. Boy, and you can tell the energy that Quick has getting that clutch in a game that he had the lead at the start, but Wadi just never let off his tail. He stuck to him like glue, and even at times looked like it was going to be his game. But Quick, coming out of the disadvantage, had a couple of extra ideas in this charge shot right here. Do you know what that looks like to me, Ryan? Tell me. That looks like a true combo and a true mini pop-off from Quick mm -hmm. right there. That looks like a Samus who knows his way around any size of that charge shot. Mm -hmm. And that's the important thing about mm -hmm. playing this character is that she might have a lot of tools, but the one you have to master first to get success is that charge shot. And like you said, it was the key to that match. We didn't see a lot of it in game one, but so much of it in game two. And I think that a lot of it came down 
to this stage tour. So it was a great counter pick from Quick, and Wadi didn't have as many places, as much room to sort of get away from the charge shot and neutralize its effectiveness. Yeah, like you mentioned, those platforms really did play a huge part. The fact that they're so close to the ledge oh. and amplifying uh, Quick's ability to set up those charge shots at the ledge and just catch Wadi's landings. One more time, that guy loves to spin. If anything, Man, dude, this is the other thing about Wadi's Rob in particular, is that so many people play Rob sort of by the book, right? They know how many tools he has, they know how oppressive he can be, but Wadi said before, he doesn't necessarily do everything to win because sometimes he likes to try and, you know, sell out for the cool thing, right? He said that before, and yeah, when he plays for the Billies, I think that's when he plays at the best. 100%. That side B was so aggressive, and yet it worked. Right, that's definitely not a buy the book side B. That's a, I want to get a nice little clip and make people go wild side B. And he did. Wasn't by the book, and yet yeah. it was still a good read. Yeah. We'll see here if he's able to uh, continue those plays and actually lead him to success with it, or if Quick's going to be able to keep it up. Yeah, I think that Wadi right now is just going to try and figure out a couple of adaptations that he can make, right? Maybe he thinks that he's got a couple of good reads on Quick that he can exploit here because he's going back to small battlefield. But once again, this stage just looks like it's so good for Quake, especially in those early percents. And it looks like Wadi maybe is shifting the timing on his decision making because the decision to completely avoid the ledge by flying up is the same, but this time was able to avoid that charge shot that Quick was ready to pull the trigger on. Oh, this is no double jump though. That's one of the really careful things you have to keep in mind as a Rob is how you're using that double jump, not only to get to the ledge, but to get off it as well. And Quick, he said, if you've got the aggressive specials off stage, I got them too. You can't be taking your time out there. We know this story. 100%, and like you mentioned, it was because he saw that Wadi spent the double jump to set the laser. That, the, that fly recovery is so slow, you could definitely line up that charge shot. And I Quick already lined up a bunch of percent in the second stop. I'm saying, dude, Quick in these early percent has just been absolutely nuts. So he has clearly practiced his combo game for this character. And it's not only that these things are true, it's also that he is getting a very keen reaction on Wadi's positioning. Mm -hmm. Now we're seeing, again, these wave bounce uh, charges on the charge shot are feeding Quick so much space and room to move where Wadi kind of has to sit there paralyzed because you expect him to be a little bit closer than he is. Mm -hmm. And Wadi really trying to get close right now, but he knows he has to take his time. There is the back air catching Quick, running into center stage. And that is something that we have seen is that Quick is very, very keen to try and get stage control as quickly as possible because he knows what happens. He gets a big win if he's in center stage, but the same story goes for Rob. Okay, forced out that air dodge. So these bombs are definitely going to be playing a role here, but Wadi Flailing his arms, was able to get around him, is got caught by that grab, but not quite enough percent on Rob to get the up throw KO. Ooh. This time, like we mentioned, keeps peeking his head just above the ledge to try to, you know, counter assault, get away from the ledge trap, but Quick is ready to pull the trigger with those charge shots. And that's something that we've seen this entire set from Wadi too, is that every time those bombs come out at the ledge, he goes high one way or another, utilizing that double jump, Quick catches it again, and he's just all over the robot. I, I gotta wonder, sometimes you might just have to resign yourself to the ledge. Take that, oh, oh my goodness, it took the bomb, was able to convert into that charge shot. That's why Wadi doesn't want to just sit there at the ledge, because it's terrifying when the bombs are coming down. The bombs, uh, especially against a character who just is not so maneuverable, right, has a hard time getting off the ledge sometimes. I mean, look at that, the shield poke because he got the double bombs. I want to I wanna see that one more time. Because that bomb perfectly timed. How did that shield poke? No shot. No shot. I mean, yeah, yes. The shield is up. Yes, charge <laughs> shot, I guess. But that's literally. Wadi, you can see it. He's angling it, too. He's angling he's it He's literally forward. angling it forward. And he still got hit by that charge shot. Samus and that's too powerful. And that just goes to show you guys. Unfortunately, Rob is big. Rob is big. But in this case, to his In this detriment. case, it's not even a joke. It's literally, it's literally like, just Rob is so big, got him killed. That's a melee Mr. Game & Watch shield. Like, <laughs> It's so sad. And speaking of characters with struggling hitboxes in melee, Wadi is switching over to the Mew 2. He's realized that Quick has got a big download on that Rob, and he needs to change things up. And changing it up on the stage as well, Hollow Bastion's where he's going. Yeah, a little bit more open. You do have some solid ledge trapping here, but I think the space between you and the platform is going to give Wadi a little bit extra room to work with that he didn't have on small battlefield. Mm -hmm. 
We'll see right now the ledge trapping, of course, is going to get a lot harder for Quick because he's not able to cover platform and ledge at the same time, where Wadi's got so much maneuverability that he can absolutely get to that center plat here. Quick, this is a re-grab, but had the invincibility, I guess. Now, Wadi, it's a pizza pie, but it is not strong enough. That's not New York pizza if that didn't KO. No, just about smash to do the damage, but then the forward of Shadow Claw does finish the job. Wadi looking extremely good at the start of this. He did give him the dollar slices, 69% on him, though. Quick wants something a little better than nice for this percent, though. And Wadi, again, immediately getting him over towards the ledge. And the, honestly, dude, the Shadow Ball is doing him wonders. He says, oh, well, if you're going to use the charge shot like that, why don't I throw out one of my own? Yeah, I got something similar for you. It's been working up in the lab. It's just darker. Oh, my goodness. And he waited for that get up. Wadi with all the coverage in the world. A lot of good recognition from Wadi there. Quick has been using a lot of that spot dodge and taking a lot of advantage in the scrap when both players hit, but have like a maybe Ooh. neutral on hit move. Wadi You're finally waiting. It's a lot of shield damage right here. Yeah, Wadi has been doing a good job of waiting for Quick, too. I mean, that's kind of been the definition of this match. Ooh, that's the mix. Up is going to do it. Once again, when Quick just does that jab one, you know you're in for a world of hurt. Every time I see Samus hit that jab one pivot grab, it looks like a true combo. It's not, but it feels like it. Uh-oh, that's a re-grab. Wadi trying to play impatient, and he will eventually get that stock. I love that after he missed that Shadow Ball, he didn't panic. He still waited for something to come out of Quick, and he did end up getting the stock because of that. Quick going for that jab pressure. Wadi really quick with the spot dodge. I like that he's sitting just under this platform. Makes it really difficult for Quick to find a way in without maybe tossing a projectile. And he's got the answers for that. He's got his own Shadow Ball. He's got his Reflector. Mm -hmm. He's got Quick at the ledge. What's he going to do with it? A hold on to it for now. And I love this, that Wadi's not really even using the Shadow Ball to attack that much. It's just to make sure that Quick can't get comfortable establishing offense. Because even right there, it looked like Quick might have been able to establish something, but he used that full charge shot, just or the Shadow Ball, to say, Stop! Stop right there! Don't get on my stage. Do not pass go. We go to game five. And, and I love that you mentioned, yeah, we aren't even just seeing like zoning or pressure from the Shadow Ball. The main thing that I that I see out of this Shadow Ball is the fact that he's been peppering quick with it means he has not had an opportunity to set up his own charge shot. Oh it was my so gosh. crucial. He's just sliding in nice with the down smash. I think, I think Quick was trying to get down to the ledge there. Maybe he thought that he was going to slide off stage from that Shadow Ball. Yeah. And 100% and like... In game one, we saw very little charge shot come out of Quick and be successful. In this game, it's also been very difficult for him to set that up. When he has it, like you see there, he finds success. When he keeps getting pestered by these Shadow Balls and doesn't get the opportunity to charge his own, it works in Wadi's favor. He, he needs to have his feet solid on the ground. I mean, it's basically whoever gets better use out of their neutral bees is going to take the set. And that's why we've seen Wadi had success in that last one. And I hope that we see a lot more of that liberal use of that Shadow Ball. On Town & City, Quick's going to be able to get a lot more room away from the Mewtwo, right? Mm -hmm. That Space Cat can't hurt you if you're all the way onto the other side of one of the bigger stages in the game. And that's what Quick is looking for. It's just a moment to get his feet solid on the ground. But he can't do that if Wadi is consistently getting him off stage. Right, I mean, that's definitely the pick here. Look at the time that he has to charge that shot where Wadi has to really get aggressive and in his face to do anything about it. And here he's sitting back. I, I think the other thing that's really making it hard for Quick is just the fact that Wadi has a reflector now. Because yeah. we've seen a bunch of times that Quick looks like he's about to shoot that charge shot and then thinks the better of it because that confusion comes out. And there's just no way you can take one of those coming back at you. No, it's, uh, it's not a two-way street. Wadi has the reflector, but Quick does not. Ooh, right in front. I think Wadi was ready for that grab, too. Tried to but tech it. Yeah, <laughs> the jab actually put him in range, extending his hurt box. Nice. Ooh. Use the teleport. Get off of the platform immediately. And even if you saw the parry on that Shadow Ball, it bought Wadi some space and room to breathe. Now here's Quick getting some true combo action right there with that charge shot into the dash attack. We saw it earlier. We'll see it again. Ooh, oh, that's a dead Wadi. SD from Wadi. Wanted to... I mean, it was a forced error, right? You wanted to air dodge there so you don't get hit by the charge shot. You air dodge just a little bit too soon, and you Ooh. take the fade anyway. And then he got dumped by that charge shot too quick, really establishing momentum, something we never saw in that game four. 
once again, this ledge trap, it's important for both of these guys. Now, Wadi getting quick into the corner. This is his chance to get back into the game. Yeah, making the most of these air to airs. He is going mm. to even catch quick, hanging on the ledge because that shadow ball bounces as it moves, sometimes dips below the ledge. Two stocks apiece for these guys, and the crowd is really coming alive watching this set because it's been a little bit of an adventure to get all the way to game five, but Tri-State, MDVA, everybody in the crowd is really starting to get into it here. But Wadi's the one at the deficit, and it's, oh, that first time that he gets that reflector, and he was looking for the whole pizza pie. And like you mentioned, that reflector finally coming out to play at the tip of the shadow ball, meaning both players get to fire their shots here. Look at the damage. Wadi has answered it quite well against Quick. Not fast, but he has done the damage you know, slow and steady. And I love that that's the way that Wadi's been playing right now. He has not pressed forward without an insurance policy behind him. Hold forward, that's, that's Panda's motto. Mm -hmm. But they don't say hold forward stupidly. Exactly. <laughs> Wadi's taking this to the cerebral zone. Nice stare from the ledge with great spacing from Quick is going to set Wadi away. And because he was charging that shot, you know you can toss out the shot. But answered immediately. Man, Wadi just having an answer at just the right time. Last stock, game five here. Let's make big moves. The winner of this goes on to top 32. And I can't believe it. I would have think that this is later in bracket the way these two are playing. But Quick, again, that upper out of shield working against the tall characters has the tech chase on the platform. And that's going to be a lot of charge on the shot. That's going to be Wadi. No, I thought that was no jump, but Wadi did save it. Now Wadi has advantage with Quick on the platform, but the charge shot is going to buy Quick space. Gets a little extra charge. Great use of the teleport, but again, caught him slipping, charging his own shadow ball. Oh, but the reflector from Wadi, and he wanted Quick to drift in and try and get that counter hit. But he's playing it so patiently. Forward air takes it. Quick turns around, he knows that that is a big win for him as Europe will continue to stay in the winner's bracket. Wadi will go down and Quick gets to do his country proud. Yeah, doing an amazing job of adapting to Wadi's play at the ledge here where you saw he didn't apply that charge shot pressure. He wanted to dive up and above. And even when it was the disable that Wadi pulled out the first time that he had pulled out that trick the whole time, he had pulled it out so that he could get around any reflection anagans and set up that meaty hitbox that you know will definitely take care of Mewtwo getting up from ledge there. Mm -hmm. Man, this whole set was just so back and forth, but I, I think Quick coming out on top, you know, it, it said that the winner of any game that you play is the one who makes the last adaptation, and in mm. that case, it was Quick. They were very evenly matched going into that last stock, but I think that Quick finally picked up on the way that Wadi was coming off the ledge with the Mewtwo, which was something that he didn't really pick up on in that game.